Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's class, I'm going to show you how to do user authentication uh, by using Eclipse ID. So here I'm going to write a servlet and I'm going to authenticate the user. So assume that there are four users, one, two, three, four, and their passwords are password one, two, three, four, et cetera. So we need to write a servlet wherein uh, we'll be storing all these four user IDs and passwords in the cookies. And once the user enters the user ID and password in the HTML form, uh, so we're going to extract the user ID and the password and then compare it against the data that is stored in the cookies. And if the username and password matched, we'll be displaying welcome and then followed by the name of the user. Else we'll be saying you are not an authenticated user. So this is the problem statement. So this is going to be our login page wherein the user will be entering the username and password. And upon clicking on login, four users information, usernames and passwords are already there in the cookies. So once the user enters the username and password, the username value and the password value are compared against the data that is stored in the cookies. If this data matched across the data that is stored in the cookies, then we'll be displaying welcome user. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. For this, so we need a... Uh, Eclipse IDE. So let me open Eclipse IDE and show you how to create this web application. Uh, so I'm going to the local drive, then program files, then Eclipse folder. So inside this, I'm going to double click on this particular Eclipse uh, application. Uh, so it is asking me for the workspace. I'm keeping it by default. So then click on OK and Eclipse will open for you. So it is opening for us. Okay, so this is how our Eclipse startup will look like. So let me actually in the project explorer. So give a right click and then go to the new and I want to create a dynamic web project. Click on the dynamic web project and give a name to it. Okay, so I'm going to give a name to it, which is login. Okay, and uh, then I'm keeping target uh, runtime is uh, server is Apache. So then the version of the servlet is 3.1. I'm keeping them as it is. And then I'm clicking on next. Okay, so then here uh, uh, SRC and then I'm clicking on next. Uh, so here it is uh, giving me the web module uh, um the directory format and it is asking me to tell whether to generate a web.xml deployment descriptor or not so if you check this it will automatically create a web.xml descriptor for you uh, so i'm not uh, checking it as of now because i don't want to do it okay so then i'll be uh, clicking on finish okay so once i click on finish uh, so you can see there is uh, the login folder here Okay, so as I expand this login folder, you can see this basic uh, directory structure, which is already created by your uh, Eclipse. Okay, so now inside this web content, so this is very important. So inside this web content, we need to uh, place our uh, um, home page. Okay, so which is the login page. So to do that, see, I, I'm just keeping it like this. And, and again, I'm clicking on uh, right clicking and this inside this drop down menu i'm going into new and uh, see i have selected this login folder okay so inside this login folder now i'm going to create a html file so just click on the html file so what is the name that you want to give to this html file so i want to give a name which is index.html so i'm just keeping it as index.html go to next and just keep it as it is just finish so you can see that where this index.html came and added is into the web content. Okay, so into the inside web content, inside web INF folder. Okay, so which is index.html. So inside the body of, uh, so the basic template of index.html is already created for you. So if you want to give a title, you can give the title. So say, for example, I want to give the title as the uh, login form. You can keep all this as it is, uh, so I'm keeping it as login form. And inside the body, we are going to write the code um, that will actually create uh, two text fields and then a submit button. So let me actually do that. So I am, okay, so here I have created a form and the method is post and the action is dot slash cookie one. So the servlet name is cookie one, okay, right. 
and I have created an input uh, field to take in the username and then another input field to take in the password and then finally the submit button. So this is my index.html. So let me press control S to save it. Okay. So now my index.html is saved. Okay. So this is my login. Okay. Fine. Uh, so now inside the login, what I want to do is I want to add a servlet. So, okay, again, right click on it and, and then I'll uh, mm, uh, click on this servlet. Okay, so I want to create the servlet. So, click on servlet. So, now you can give the class name. Okay, so what's the class name? So, I, wa I want the class name to be cookie1. And then you can see that the super class is java x dot servlet dot http and http servlet and so on. So, click on next. Okay, so this is uh, what it is showing. The URL mapping is slash cookie and so on. So then click on next and then um, so finally we'll click on finish. So as you click on finish, okay, so this is uh, actually the basic template of your servlet um, has uh, opened for you, okay. So now we'll be importing the packages that are required for creating this. Uh, uh, see here we just have one uh, import package which is java.io.io exception. But uh, you want for the print writer and all that you require uh, uh, print writer which is there in IO package. So I'll make it as star. Okay. So I'll say java.io.star. And here you can see like the specific packages are imported. So I don't want that uh, to happen. So what I'll do is I'll make it as a um, star. Okay. So all the classes will be imported. And then here I have java .web servlet. Uh, so I'll tell you why I have uh, kept that. Uh, so I'll be taking off this and I'll put a star and then I'll uh, remove these two things. Okay. So which will be included in the previous one. Uh, so let me tell you why we have this annotations dot web servlet. Okay. So this is annotations. Annotations start with an at, at the rate. Okay. So these are like comments which will go on through the uh, till the execution of your uh, program. Uh, so here you can see that inside this web servlet at the rate represents that it is a annotation and um, this is the name of the annotation which is web servlet and you can see inside the double quotes you have slash cookie one. See why I didn't create this uh, web.xml is web.xml is used for uh, mapping your servlet with the uh, HTML files. So instead of uh, having this web.xml you can directly have this annotations one line before the class. So before the class, I'm writing at the rate web servlet and cookie. So this will be enough. Uh, so the URL mapping will happen over here. Okay. So in the HTML form, in the index.html, I said dot slash cookie one, right? So here uh, it will map to this particular cookie one class. Okay. Fine. So now as I have mentioned in the index.html, I have mentioned the method is equal to post. So here you can see the method uh, uh, do post and do get both are there. Uh, you can just take off this uh, do get method because we are not using it. Um, you can simply use your do post method. So I'm just taking off this uh, do get method. So I'm keeping the do post method and inside this do um, post method, we'll be writing the code for the servlet. Um, so the code for this particular experiment uh, eight, I have already explained in my previous videos. I'll give the link in the description box. You can just watch the uh, detailed uh, explanation of the code in that particular video. So let me actually copy the servlet code over here. These are all the uh, import uh, statements. And this is the annotation, which will do the mapping for us. And then inside the class cookie1, which extends HTTP servlet. So we have uh, overridden the do post method. So inside the do post method, uh, see, uh, we have uh, taken four users and four passwords which are stored in the cookies. So upon receiving the username and password in the strings in the N and P, we are comparing this N and P across this U1, U2, U3, U4 and P1, P2, P3, P4. If there is a match, then we are welcoming the user. So we are saying welcome and then uh, the name of the user is kept in uppercase. If uh, it's not matching with uh, even the username or the password, then you're saying you're not an authenticated user. So this is the code that we have written and we have written the logic in such a way, um, which I have written in this particular for loop. Okay, fine. So this is the servlet. Okay, so once we have written the servlet, then save it.
and uh, these are only the two things that we will be doing so you don't need to do anything everything will be organized accordingly by your eclipse itself okay so this is our login uh, so inside our login folder you can see that uh, uh, so you have this java resources where there is a source files and this is the package okay so which has gone into the default package and then you can see that uh, if you're not mentioning any package it will go into the default package because I didn't mention any package uh, earlier while creating, okay? Um, so that's why it has gone to the default package. But uh, if you want to, you can actually write this statement or else you can remove it, okay? So say I'm removing it, let me say this, okay? Right, it has gone to the default package and the name of the class is cookie1.java. And where is this index.html? Index.html is there in WebANF folder. And the link between this or mapping between the index.html and cookie one is done by the annotations. Okay, so once your entire folder is ready, so this is your login folder, which is ready. Okay, right. So I made certain changes into your Tomcat server. So let me actually show it. As I double click on this particular Tomcat server at localhost, so you'll be getting an overview of the servlet. So in here, what it did is just take a look uh, uh, in here. So I have uh, put the option which is use Tomcat installation takes control of Tomcat installation. So I have selected this. Okay, so you just need to select that. Okay, so don't forget to do that. Um, so this is what I have done. Okay, right. The next thing that I did is I have gone to the folder which is login folder. And then uh, I need to go to this particular, uh, give a right click and these options will open and uh, go to build path. Inside this build path, like you have uh, configure build path. Okay, so go into this and then uh, you just need to uh, go to this add external jars. Okay, and then pick this uh, serv servlet.api from your Tomcat, okay? So where is this? It's in the C drive, then program files, and then Apache Software Foundation, Tomcat, and go to this uh, lip, okay? So in here, um, like you will be having a servlet API, okay? So this is your servlet API. Just select this and click on open. Okay, so when you do that, what will happen is that library will come and add for you inside this particular login. Okay, so that is what we need to do. And after that, click on apply and then okay. Okay, so uh, that will help uh, for uh, your servlet to get all that uh, uh, APIs. Okay, so like the Java X uh, package and all that uh, will be there in that particular servlet uh, dot API. So we need to give the paths to this particular login folder so that it will get all the packages from that servlet dot API. Okay, right. so to run this particular login, we just need to start the Tomcat server. Uh, so let me actually right click on this and uh, click on start. Okay. Uh, so as you click on start, the Tomcat has started. Okay. So now select this particular login and then right click on it and go to run as and click on run on server. Okay. So it will show you the default server. So this is a default server. Click on next. And you can see there are two things which is login and login demo. So you just want the uh, only login to be there okay so you remove this and keep only login okay so i want only the login folder to be executed so i'm just keeping the login here and click on finish okay so are you sure you want to remove the resource from the server okay okay so now it is saying restart the server so click on okay and then uh, uh, the server has started and you can see that uh, it has opened in the another browser okay? and uh, not internal to Eclipse, it has opened in another browser. So let me actually give the username and password. So I have given Sudha and then the password to be Sudha123. Okay, so I click on login. So it is saying welcome Sudha. Okay, so say I'm giving the logins to be wrong. So I have given 889, which is wrong the password. So as I click, it is saying you're not an authenticated user. So this is where uh, you are getting the result in the external browser. Say, for example, you want the result to appear inside the Eclipse itself. So to do that, what you can do is go to Windows, 
okay so go to the web browser so you can see that uh, i have kept the option default system web browser uh, so if you want the output to execute internal to eclipse so you can select internal web browser after selecting the internal web browser restart your tomcat okay so i'm restarting my tomcat okay so i restarted my tomcat and then click on the folder where your application is and then right click and go to run as and click on run on server okay so all this uh, you keep finish so you can see that uh, the, now it has opened eclipse has opened an internal browser and you can see this is the url and so on so which has opened the internal browser for you so just type in some uh, name okay so i am saying it is uh, um, fatima okay and then i have given the password to be 345 so wherein fatima is not there in the cookies okay so we didn't register fatima here so what are on what and all are the names that are registered on uh sudha sinu kumar and rao and sudha one two three and sinu one two three kumar one two three and rao one two three are the passwords associated with these four usernames okay so there is no fatima uh so what we'll be getting so what is the result if it is not matching if it is not matching you'll be getting an output which is you are not an authenticated user so that's what we are expecting and let us see okay so that is what we have got so if you just want it uh, uh so if you want uh, um um the correct okay so let me give seno okay so and what is the password for seno so the password for Sinu is Sinu123. So let me actually uh, say Sinu123. So it's the correct password. So it will say welcome Sinu. Okay. Uh, well, friends, this is how you create web application in Eclipse. And uh, I hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you for watching.